Today we're talking Playboy whiskey. You heard me right. This is the Rare Hair Lucky Bastard Canadian whiskey finished in Pinot de Charente barrels. And get this, this bottle right here is $600. Is it worth it? Let's talk about that today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Greatly appreciate it. So like I had mentioned, this is the Rare Hair Canadian Whiskey finished in Pinot de Charente barrels. MSRP on this, you heard me right, $599.99. This is where I kind of get a little lost in today's day and age of whiskeys. For me, there's probably not many whiskeys that can command that kind of price, but we're going to talk about that today. And again, if this is something that is on your radar or something you've been looking forward to, then here it is. But again, like I mentioned before, this is the Rare Hair Lucky Bastard Canadian Whiskey, again, finished in Pinot de Charente uh, barrels. So what exactly is this? So this is coming in at 89 proof or 44.5% ABV, mash bill undisclosed, and it is aged 30 years. So that does, so it does have that going for it. And like I mentioned before, the MSRP on this bad boy is coming in at $599.99. So there you have it. Let's talk a little bit about that today and see if this is in today's day and age a $600 bottle of whiskey. All right, color wise, as you can see kind of a medium, light to medium kind of copper color. Even though it's aged again 30 years, again, you're not getting a tremendous amount of that color coming from any of these barrels, whether it's the original barrels or the finishing barrel. Uh, what I will say is it does have, even at a pretty low proof, it does have some decent oil. So hopefully that will help translate over to both the nose and more importantly, the palate. But Let's go ahead and dive in and see what this one is going to give us on the nose. So immediately with the Pinot de Charente barrels, you're getting this heavy kind of tropical fruit kind of note, little slight earthiness, more of a Armagnac, Cognac kind of nose, or again, it's a little bit of that earthiness, a little bit of that kind of musty or dusty oak. You know, when you start getting into these aged whiskeys, that oak starts to kind of change over to it being a little bit more on the funky side. That is definitely present on the nose. Maybe even some slight kind of green apple, caramel, caramel green apple kind of combo. Pretty decent spice even at 89 proof. Again, really focusing heavy on that kind of older funky uh, oak profile. Maybe even the kind of a nutty characteristic that's there to it. Not overly dominant like a like a peanut shell or anything. This is probably something that's a little softer than that. Some nice vanillas, maybe even a little bit of like a marshmallow characteristic. Light kind of honey note. But more importantly, is the $600 that you're going to spend on this worth it on the palate? Let's talk about that right now. Cheers. So immediately right out of the gate, there's this really nice softness or like a velvety texture to this, which is something that's always really nice. Now, I will say this, immediately after kind of taking that first sip, you're wanting to kind of go back because it does kind of dissipate or start to kind of disappear uh, in terms of the flavor profile. So Already, it's got a little bit of a check mark against it, but let's kind of dive into that a little bit more. Definitely that funky oak, maybe musty or dusty oak does have that kind of old dusty profile. But again, slight earthiness, that that kind of cognac or, or armagnac, that, that profile is, is there. Soft, velvety, but on the palate, it's just not holding up very long you're you're getting that initial wave of flavor 
and very quickly, unfortunately, it's kind of going away. There's not a lot of spice behind it, some, some sweetness, but again, more of that, that older oak profile with a little bit of that earthiness that you're getting from the, the Pinot de Chirance barrels, you know, that cognac, Armagnac kind of profile so far. Yeah, what I would say with this is I think this is probably a whiskey that needs to be a minimum of 100 proof. If you can get above that and maybe allow for some of that spice or do something to help for the spice to kind of kick in, you almost need that to balance out the, the sweetness and that slight kind of oak funk that it has to it. I just want more. For me, at that kind of price point, I want significantly more. I need a longer finish. I need more spice. Again, I want that proof to be there. One thing that it has remained kind of consistent has been that, that creamy or, or smooth kind of characteristic that it has. I do like that. I just would want a significant amount of spice, some maybe a little bit more heft to it. It's just kind of falling apart too quickly for, for my liking. There was one other thing I was kind of picking up, which was something I don't get often on, on whiskeys or specifically Canadian whiskey. But there's a little bit of this like apricot or maybe an apricot jam that, that it has to it, you know, kind of combined with some of the tropical notes up front and a little bit more of that kind of musty or, or, or dusty kind of funk and a little bit of that, that Armagnac or Cognac that's there. But overall, I would say for $600, in my opinion, there needs to be a lot more going on with what this is. I get that it's 30 years old. At the end of the day, you still need to be able to sit down and allow for that whiskey to develop, sit on the palate, offer something that you're going to really truly appreciate. And again, at this price point, for me, this is something that, again, I mentioned 100 proof. I would really like to have this at barrel proof and and maybe at that point again you know without being able to taste what that is you know maybe we're starting to get up there again a little bit more but you know at that price point of six hundred dollars i'm struggling with this uh tremendously i wouldn't recommend anybody paying six hundred dollars for this based on what the profile is. Now, again, if you've got more money than time, great. But if you're trying to find any kind of value at $600 and what this is that this has to offer, sipping on this today, I just don't see that. And if, if I'm being honest, it, it feels like a whiskey that really needs to be less than a hundred dollars in in my opinion now again they've got their own reasons for for why they're charging that kind of money and maybe they feel this is a whiskey that that is worthy of that in my opinion it, it's not but again that is for you to decide uh, solely as the consumer but there you go guys this is again the newest release from rare hair this is their lucky bastard canadian whiskey finished in Pinot de Chirance uh, barrels. And like I mentioned, MSRP on this, 600 bucks. To me, it would be a pass at that kind of uh, price point. So there you have it. If nothing else, hopefully this was a bit educational. You learned a little bit more about what this was, uh, but I wanted to be able to do the review and, and get this out there. Again, this was a sample that was provided to me uh, by them. And I have to be honest, uh, there's always full 100% transparency that you're going to get from me on anything. So with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in today. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those places at My Bourbon Journey. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, 
or become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out the Patreon link uh, in the description below. A lot of other great things down there for you as well. So again, with that being said, remember it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers. Stepping outside, feeling fresh, real to the death, see it all over me, me, I defy ya, yeah, that's pressure.